Hello, this video is in answer to a request from one of our viewers who wanted to know how to write an expert advisor that traded on the stochastic and then two different moving averages on the stochastic all being above or below certain levels. Uh, I've taken a little time looking at maybe some clever ways to do this, but in the end, I think the obvious is the best way. So it's not going to take very long to show this. Let's get into it after the disclaimer. On the screen, I have the indicator we're talking about. I have the stochastic line and then a two period moving average on the stochastic and then a three period moving average on the stochastic. So stochastic, fast moving MA and slow moving MA. And the request is to write an EA that will trade when these are above or below certain levels. So now let's look at the code to do that. I'm not going to go over everything with writing an EA. I've already set up most of the structure of the EA. I'm just going to go through the things that are relevant to this request. First, we have some usual inputs and I've set an upper and a lower level, those two levels where we want to trade if the stochastic is above or below. The request wasn't clear whether the same levels would be used for the stochastic and the moving averages. I'm just using one, but it's easy enough to add in more of these inputs and set different tests on the moving averages and the stochastic. And then the rest of this are just standard inputs to a stochastic, standard inputs to a moving to a fast moving average, and then standard inputs to a slow moving average. So next I want to set up variables to hold these values that we're going to trade on. I'm setting up a buffer for the stochastic because I want to calculate a moving average on that. So I need an array of stochastic values. And then I just have a single value for the fast moving average and the slow moving average that I'll be using when I test to see if we want to trade. In the init section, I want to resize that stochastic buffer and I'm resizing it to the size of the slow period or I'm resizing it to the number of the slow moving average period plus one. So this is assuming that the slow period is greater than the fast period. It's a, it's a natural assumption. Uh, but if you want it to be more robust, you might want to test that and use the larger of the two. And then the plus one, which you see here in slow moving plus one, that is to allow the values in the stochastic buffer to match the bar numbers. So there will be a zero element in that array, which will match bar number zero, but I'm using from bar number one onwards. And you can see element zero is not going to be used I'm assuming that we're trading on a new bar. So because we're only trading on each new bar, I'll be looking at bar number one and not bar number zero. Then in the on tick section, I've created a function that I'm going to call to do all of the calculations on the stochastic buffer and the moving averages because I don't want to do that inside the on tick loop. I like to keep that on tick loop short and easy to read. Then I'm just going to compare the values. So we'll get to the fill buffer function in a moment, but all I do then is I compare the stochastic buffer value number one with the lower limit that we set in the inputs and the fast moving average also with the lower limit. And as I said, you might want to set different limits. I'm using the same limit for the moving averages and the slow moving average. So when all of those are below the lower limit, and I'm not actually doing any trading here, I'm just showing how to do the testing. Uh, so I'm just using a print statement. We're trading below the lower, whatever trade you might want to execute there. And then of course, the opposite is exactly opposite. Uh, if the buffer stochastic is greater than the upper level and the fast moving average is greater than the upper and the slow moving average is greater than the upper, then we're trading above the upper. To the fill buffer function, it's one function that will calculate all the values and they are, remember these are variables that are set on the global scope, so I don't need to return them from the function, I just need to set them in here. And first I want to fill up my stochastic array, and that's just a simple loop. I'm beginning with bar number zero, I'm moving up to less than the slow period number, uh, and then I'm simply using the iStochastic function to calculate that value uh, with the inputs that we gave for a standard stochastic calculation. Uh, mode main is the main stochastic value. There are two values in a stochastic. I want the first. Uh, and of course, I is the bar number that we're calculating the stochastic for. 
Now, if I were trading this on every tick, I would probably have a different mechanism for storing these stochastic values in the array rather than calculate every element in that array on every tick because it will be a performance problem. But if I'm only trading once per bar, I don't see this as a problem and it's a lot easier than worrying about maintaining the values. So once I have a stochastic array, I just use the IMA on array function and I have an earlier video that shows how to use the IMA on array. But all I need to do is pass in the stochastic buffer array, the number of elements that I'm going to use to calculate, and by setting zero, it will use the entire array. And remember, we set the array only to be as large as the uh, slow moving average number. Then the fast period, which is the number of elements that will actually be used as part of the moving average calculation. Uh, I've specified a fast method here. This is the shift value, which I've never used. I always set that to zero. So I'm basically calculating a moving average on the stochastic buffer for the number of periods specified as the fast moving average and using the method that I specified in the inputs for the fast method and beginning at element number one in the stochastic buffer. So this is again why I wanted to have the stochastic buffer match the bar numbers. I want the value for bar number one, so I can just use stochastic element number one. And then the slow moving average is exactly the same calculation here. Uh, buffer stochastic, but using the slow periods and the slow method. And that is all that is needed to perform this calculation. So just quickly, the important parts again, I'm simply comparing the three values. So the first value is from the stochastic array, and I'm using an array for the stochastic because I need to calculate the moving average on that array. But for the fast moving average and slow moving average, I don't need an array. Uh, this particular logic is only looking for those fast and slow moving averages being above or below certain levels. It's not looking at comparing them to previous fast or slow moving averages. And then all the calculation work is done here in fill buffer. If this were going to be a performance problem, I would want to save that stochastic array rather than recalculate it each time. But saving it means a lot of extra work in terms of managing the number of bars on screen and when they change, which is not necessary if I'm only doing this once per bar. Even if you're using a one minute chart, this is not a big performance problem. And then all I need to do is calculate the MA on array for the fast and the slow moving average. And that way these tests will work. So I'll leave it to you to see some of the other videos on how to actually execute trades. This is just an example of how to use the stochastic and two moving averages to calculate this value. This has been a short video. Uh, I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any requests for other videos, then use the link in the description below to leave a request for us. If you enjoyed this and if you got some value from it, please click the like button. And if you want to see more of these videos, remember to click the subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we do release new videos. So until next time, thank you for watching.